G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning up in the north side of the map, we've got Vortex playing on the color blue as the Abbasid Dynasty. Towards the south of the map, we have got Liquid de Muslim spawning in on the red color playing as the English. This, of course, is a game from Golden League. If you're unfamiliar with Golden League, then it is my pleasure to introduce you to a 125,000 Age of Empires 4 tournament. And I gotta tell you, it is incredibly exciting to be a part of it. This game goes on through to, I believe we're in the loser's bracket with this one. I'm not gonna give you guys specific scores because we're only gonna be covering this game in the series between these two guys. There was a quite a few games that had happened today. So we're only just taking a look back at some of the longer, more interesting matchups and interesting maps, I guess you could say, because we have got ourselves a little bit of a men at arms rush. Indeed, it is happening, ladies and gentlemen. Just get yourselves ready because we are in to the brand new meta of this new patch. And now we see, have we got a potential? Oh my Lord, we've got a potential housing issue, my friends. Watch out, Liquid to Muslim gonna be <laughs> idle right now. Not the best situation you can see is rushing down that, uh, that house, but instead opting for the lumber camp in this situation. And, uh, and now we see Vortex actually scouts out this early rush, sees the barracks. We hear that bell dinging out from that town center and he's gonna be careful, making sure he's gathering up plenty of gold because this could be an issue right here. Vortex needs to gather up 200 gold. He's got 100 in the bank. He's got three villagers on this gold right now. He is going to be rushing it up, but there is going to be a man at arms coming in. We saw that deer move out of position. You can see the man at arms coming through and watch out, ladies and gentlemen, because he means business. Eight damage per attack from him. We see that House of Wisdom going to be going down right now for Vortex as well, but you can see he's going to be struggling to get up this gold and more villagers heading out with their mining axes ready to mine that gold up. And now man at arms is going to be doing some damage here. First hit, strikes on the villager. Second hit. Third hit. I mean, we're going to count them all down, but at the same time, do we expect a second Men at Arms coming out? It doesn't look like a second Men at Arms is going to be making its way across the field. So just going to be focusing on a single villager here to look to, look to do damage. We'll see exactly how he looks to play. Vortex now collecting up the gold from from this uh, position. And we do see the Men at Arms was on hold position for a very, very brief amount of time. But uh, now Vortex is going to be gathering up all of that, all of that gold and... Uh, is now just waiting on the food before he gets up to that next stage. But from here, I mean, the the question is not whether the Muslim has achieved what he's want, what he wanted to, because he is achieving what he wants. A lot of people would be looking at this and saying, "Drongo, hold on a minute, that man at arms, he didn't deny the gold for age up." Well, you're, you're true, Johnny. You're true. You're, you are 100 right. But that's not what he's looking to do. He's playing against the Abbasid dynasty. What do the Abbasid dynasty want to do? They want to gather gold for what is that? You ask. That's correct. Fresh food stuff. That's what they want to gather gold for. They also want to get that important wheelbarrow upgrade, but it's not going to be the case today because you can see Man at Arms actually going to be taking a little bit of damage here. He's stuck in the wood line. Oh no, the poor Man at Arms is going to be going down. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. The Man at Arms going down. Vortex is going to be very happy because he secures up that gold mine. So if the Muslim had just left that uh, Man at Arm on the gold, he would be A-OK -okay in this position, but now we see a second Man at Arm coming out of Man at Arms, a, a Man at Arms uh, going to be coming out and looking to deny that, but now we see a Wheelbarrow coming out here for the Muslim as well uh, and so he is looking to really extend out this Age 1 play and this is my theory as to what we would see coming out with the English buffs and obviously the theory that the developers would have as well is that we would start to see early aggression coming out from the English and that exactly seems to be the case once again coming out onto the gold mine, we can see another 100 gold gathered up, but that's not going to be enough for Wheelbarrow. That's not going to be enough for his upgrade, the uh, fresh food stuff. He needs 125 for that, and you can see he's only sitting on 101 at the moment, so going to be coming out, doing some damage onto these villagers. We can see the Man at Arm just going to be trying its best to force these villagers back, and now it looks like he's going to be able to gather. He needs seven more gold gathered up by this villager. He, he is struggling. Every single time he goes to collect gold, you can see it's getting cancelled by the Man at Arms. Two more villagers going to be coming out, and so much damage being done to these villagers already. You can see how low all of these villagers are, but Vortex doing a great job keeping all of the low health villagers close to his town center. Does not want to lose them. Doesn't want to risk them potentially going out to the wood line and losing their lives. But now we see a little bit of a run around going to be coming through. Still, does he have the gold for it? I think he might just have the gold for it. You can see there's three gold on this last villager. I think Vortex has managed to get up on a pretty reasonable time. Now going to be cashing in. 126. There's the fresh food stuff. He's made it. He's made it, ladies and gentlemen. No early meal going to be coming down in this situation. But you can see in this scenario... We have seen a beautiful progression coming out here uh, from the, the English player, the Muslim. He's done a great job at just denying out his 
please tell me that's a council hall. Okay, I was worried. I looked at that. I'm like, oh, hold on a minute. Is that an Abbey of Kings or a, an Abbey of Kings? Yeah, an Abbey of Kings. Uh, indeed, it was not. Uh, but now we see that uh, De Muslim actually spots out some villagers over on the stone. He says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys aren't allowed to be out here. Get back in there. Get back in there. Uh, but at the same time, we've got another Men at Arms coming out. So De Muslim going to be adding in that third Men at Arms in the Dark Age in this situation. Loses that Men at Arms, but at the same time, going to be looking to try and take out the scout of his enemy scout. They're going to fall back towards that town center. A lot of villagers sitting underneath that town center, ready to plonk inside that TC. Get a few more arrows off there. But we can see that Vortex has done a little bit of maneuvering. He said, okay, well, if you're going to deny that wheelbarrow, if you're going to try and deny my fresh foodstuffs, I'm just going to go for a second town center. I don't mind. You do you. I'll do me. And that's exactly what he does. 306 stone gathered up. Now good enough for that second town center. Going to be dropping it down. Goes for the wood line and the gold mine. Great little spot out here. Also going to be able to extend himself out towards the berries. And take a look at that interesting berry spawn. I don't think I've ever seen something quite like this. That is a lot of berries all along that wood line there. But uh, very, very nice little spawn that's come in. We'll check in on the other side as well. You can see other berry bushes. Does it, is it not interested in selecting all of the berry bushes? It just select, it just selects the two. Does it? How does it work? I think it, it's, it's going to be of the same size. Is that the way that it's selecting these berry bushes? But now Men at Arms are looking to come out. Once again, it's the third one. Going to be hitting the pitch and going to be taking out those villagers. You can see that villager with low health heading back. And at the same time, villagers out here on the wood line going to be trying to fend off this Men at Arms. And he's managing to struggle against it, but indeed does take it down. So Vortex seems to have gotten up to the, the feudal age without too much hassle. Has managed to get that second town center down. Now going to be looking to add in that wheelbarrow upgrade eventually. You can see he's got plenty of resources, or plenty of villagers rather, on that wood line. And he is running a cheaper villager economy here. So he's looking pretty good. Second town center already up for him. Back in the base of De Muslim though. Blacksmith now going to be going down and pressure going to be applied from this cliff face. Of course, we are on the brand new King of the Hill. And I, I, you know what? I haven't even mentioned the map. I haven't even talked about the map. We are on one of the most beautiful brand new maps, King of the Hill. It has been redone. It has been reimagined, remaneuvered. And I got to say, it is such a, mu a much better map at this point in time. But now, De Muslim going to be adding in a couple more farms to this mill. Going to be looking to try and extend out the... Uh, try and extend out the... Uh, the, the economy there for himself. Losing that scout, though, a bit of a mistake, unfortunately. Stable going to be coming down. This did get scouted out by De Muslim. He is aware of the the stable technology. The stable, stable? The stable technology. At the same time, going straight in for siege engineering. He is not mucking around with this. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. He means absolute business. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, you've got to be careful. Your enemy, obviously, looking to try and put on the hurt, dropping down that stable themselves. So do we potentially see out... We are don't tell me that's a men at arms in queue. That is a men at arms in queue. What are you doing? You're going to get yourself some spearmen out, my friend, because you have, you're going up against what is undoubtedly horse arch. Or, I was going to say horse archers. It's going to be horsemen, rather. Uh, that is a little bit different. Yeah, so horsemen are going to be coming out and a nice little base building that's beginning from Vortex here. So the fact that he's walled in this base on the front side limits any potential threat from that side. But now also, uh, when you consider the fact that the town center coming out from Vortex is going to have pretty decent coverage of any units trying to come in through this angle he subsequently puts down the walls on this and then forces the units to come back through on that side so great little job there from vortex to just delay any potential attack from our english player double stable going to be coming out now from vortex i don't think the muslim actually scouts this we'll check from his line of sight there doesn't appear to be any more scouts coming out a couple of villagers going to be making their way out so probably looking to drop down an outpost you could probably get a very good outpost on this cliff face just right here will be enabling him to have great coverage of all of this sort of this uh this uh, land this area but uh, let's take a look and see where he decides to go the village is going to continue to move out scout going to be spotting that and i think he's going to telegraph that over to de muslim he says hey i see your villagers if you dare bring them forward i will look to push you uh and now we do see the battering ram is coming down only a handful of infantry units out here though six longbows three men at arms and now that outpost going down exactly where we expected it would be and this is such a great spot for that outpost and now we do indeed see two villages out on the stone mine probably going to be looking to get emplacements up on this outpost here and a very difficult position to deny but the question is how does he go about potentially pushing in to his enemy's base because you can see there's a very large cliff face there's actually a nice little way down here uh, at that point but now battering ram going to be suffering a few bits of damage from that town center it's firing off its shots towards the battering ram and now going to be opening up on that wall below it could potentially pull villagers out from here, but at the same time, you are going to lose them to these units that sit safely up on the hill. And now De Muslim really looking to take control of this game with that outpost. He's got that network of castles bonus. Going to be buffing up all these units. I don't think that... Actually, I take it back. Is, is the battering ram buffed up by the network of castles? I wouldn't be surprised. Holy horsemen! 
Jeez Louise, Vortex coming up with a huge mass of horsemen. Nine horsemen now looking to take on more infantry units than exist up here. All of the men at arms, or all of the uh, longbowmen jump inside there. It's only the men at arms that are going to be remaining. No space for the villagers. Going to be all taken out. Vortex looking to clean up this position before it even really gets set up as a foothold. A couple longbows out in this position as well. A few too many horsemen, it seems, as they completely overwhelm this position. And wow, I got you got to be impressed with this, the, the macro coming out there from Vortex. I got no idea how he gathered up that many resources and he's got 600 wood in the bank as well. So uh, I got to I gotta check the replay again. I got to see exactly what was happening but right there. But that is a lot of horsemen that just came out of what appeared to be nowhere. So very well played from Vortex right there, funneling a lot of that food into those, uh, into those horsemen. But still doesn't really clean up this front position. We saw that he did manage, the Muslim did manage to gather up or, or, or manage to keep alive a lot of these longbowmen. Lost the two villagers on this forward outpost, so wouldn't be surprised if we do see more coming out towards it. Do we have more villagers? We do indeed. It's going to be three villagers now coming out for the Muslim. He's added in more farms around the town center. Going to be dropping a mill down as well, looking to buff up these these town or these uh these villages, these farms that are here being gathered. Still no sign of a second town center coming down at this stage for the Muslim. So looking to play at one town center, looking to play the old classic English build order of one town center and 55 million longbows. Uh, but we'll see how he looks to continue developing. Whether he's adding in more spears, and indeed it seems to be the case. But village is going to get picked up in the middle of the map. Got to be careful here, as now the counter attack is on. All the horsemen moving over to the other side of the map. Eight horsemen coming out for Vortex. And we see that there are plenty of, uh, of units coming out for him. Five archers behind this. He's looking to move into an archer composition and actually doing a great job picking up a couple of spearmen here. Single spearmen going to be taking a fair bit of damage, but he does keep it alive and now forcing those units back at the same time. Longbow is moving towards the front as we continue to see the outpost push creeping forward slowly but steadily. He is going to be moving forward and emplacement is going to be coming through on each of these outposts. The raid continuing. Vortex looking to try and take control of his enemy's base, at least do some damage back here. There are plenty of, uh, of villagers for the taking, and the question is whether he goes for them. Uh, one of the things I love to do on this map is wall in my wood villages. It's a very, very uh, interesting position that you can look to do it, but now Vortex moves villagers up towards that eastern side. I don't think the Muslims spotted it out just yet, but we do see a second outpost being made on this front, so a, a total of four outposts potentially coming up, and i got to say, I love the push coming through here from the Muslim. Such a smart way uh, to take this, and look at the outposts that keep coming up, and it, it's at this point I've got to start throwing out the question our outposts a little bit too good you guys know the way i, I feel about outposts they're pro i don't know whether they're too cheap maybe the emplacements on there are, on, on them are a bit too cheap i don't know i feel like you're just getting such a great deal out of those outposts they they're so difficult to deal with and they provide such a strong position to try and take them out uh, and, and now we do see uh, more and more outposts being added to the front line here five outposts in total how do you even deal with this it's gonna be very difficult for his opponent now longbows have managed to find the villagers over on the eastern flank there's nothing here protecting them not at all not an outpost post no no horsemen no nothing and now horsemen gonna be working their way back towards his own base but at the same time he's lost so many villagers in this situation one two three four five villagers all going down and only two managing to walk out in this scenario but now the horsemen looking to try and come in a fair bit of uh, a fair bit of units here to deal with these horsemen and the numbers for vortex not looking the prettiest at the same time he's got 13 horsemen and 11 archers so not too bad and now the charge going to be coming in we'll enter into the cinematic mode see if we can get a nice little camera rotation in for you guys as the longbowmen sit perched upon that hill and the tower push is really looking incredible right now for the muslim but now beautiful micro coming in from vortex he's looking to try and pick off these spears but at the same time running them in the wrong direction ideally want to be bringing them towards the archers. Archers moving forward underneath all of these outposts and we can see the battering ram coming out in response as well. The first outpost of the game does go down and at the same time all these longbowmen looking to try and stay alive at the same time. Just look at the, the horsemen doing so much damage here cleaning up all of these units in the, at this front position and we do see a second outpost. He's going to grab out that uh, oh my lord ladies and gentlemen look at all the villagers right now doing so much work so much damage. Archer mass really beginning to build now as well for Vortex as he manages to clean up all of the position here on the front line. Another outpost. Actually, that was the sixth outpost right there that went down. Second outpost going to be making its way. And villagers turning their attention towards the arrow slit outpost. He's losing plenty of villagers in here. You can see how much damage is being done. So even though Vortex is taking out these outposts, he's losing a lot of villagers being focused down. We'll take a look at the village count right now because it's not going to be pretty. 49 villagers for Vortex. That continues to dwindle. 48 and 45 for Demuslim. So he has managed to even up the village count very well in this situation despite being down an entire town center so very well played right there from the muslim to try and even out these these uh, village accounts at this early stage and look at all the dead villagers on the ground with their torches still burning oh you could 
you can just you just gotta feel sorry for him. You just gotta feel sorry for them. And now Wolf getting in on the action as well, saying to Muslim, you ain't gonna be having any villages around these parts, my friend. And gonna be turning their attention towards that horseman. Gonna be losing their life, it seems, because now in the middle of the map, the archer's gonna be looking to close the gap upon the base of the Muslim. And now Vortex is looking to try and take control. We do a villager stock take. 46 villagers at the moment for the Muslim. 44 villagers for Vortex. So the Muslim does take the villager lead. It seems he did take out quite a few villagers in this base. Battering Ram does a huge amount of work. And my fear in this position is that there were so many villagers sacrificed here for Vortex that... I thought my game was frozen for a sec. I was like, hold on a minute. What is going on with my game right now? The, these Nothing was moving. The trees weren't moving. The villagers weren't moving. The, the archer, the battering ram, neither of them were moving. And I, I thought, hold on a minute. What's going on here? But it seems like it seems like everything has come back to normal. Seems like uh, Vortex still yet to expand out to this position too hard, too fast. He's got only a handful of villagers. I say only a handful. He's got 12 villagers out here. So he's definitely making it work. And now also expanding out to the berries on the western front as well. A lot of villagers. He's very happily pushed out. But saving up a little bit of gold there, Vortex, mate. What are you looking to achieve with all that? That is an awful lot of gold. He could, he could afford pretty much every single upgrade in age two and still age up behind that. Let's see exactly what it goes for. And it looks like it's going to be a whole bunch of barracks. Uh, so could we potentially see a bit of a transition into Men at Arms? Is he going to Castle Age? I would suspect so. But let's see how he looks to play it. He's exhausted all the berries in his base. And now we'll take a look back at the base of the Muslim, who looks very happy. Look at the farms coming out from him. We've got a total of 24 farms coming out for the Muslim. Single horseman going to be making its way into the wood line, but... Uh it's made, it's made a little mistake, it seems. It's overestimated exactly its strength as the villagers tee off upon it and take it down. And now, a little interesting scenario here. I'm not sure exactly what's happened with the line of sight in this position, uh, but villagers struggling to chop towards that direction, it seems. And uh, and now, the Muslim managing to stabilize. I'd be pretty happy if I was in this position as him. You can see he's picked up that uh, that Dark Age Men at Arms upgrade and gone up to the Feudal Age Men at Arms and now beginning a mass on the front line. You can see a lot of Longbowmen out here, but at the same time going to be contesting with all of the upgrades coming out from his opponent. So many upgrades looking. He's got mass plus ones that have come through. Village is going to have to be falling back from this position as the Men at Arms try and hold on against these horsemen. But at the same time, we do hear that outpost going down on the other side of the Sacred Side. It looks like Demusa may have picked off more than he can chew and Vortex is going to be looking to try and come out of his base. He's got that plus one armor, but just not enough horsemen. And now the men at arms begin pushing forward. They've got that plus one armor. Still yet to grab that plus one attack, but they are early men at arms, so they did get that plus two attack from being in the feudal age. And now we see the longbows firing off. Beautiful arrows, the way that they come down. I got to say, I love the way that they look, but um, now going to be forcing back these archers. And it feels like he may have bitten off more than he could chew Vortex. So he does now go up to the next stage. It's going to be the culture wing. You can tell by this, this strong stand of, of culture that is coming through from him. He is going to be getting up to that culture age. It looks like he's still sitting in his first level of golden age, very close to the second age or the second level of his uh, golden age. But now we see Longbowman teeing off on the villages down below. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at the infrastructure that he's got sitting out there. Four barracks, two archery range, and two stables. So going to be heading into what I would expect is four barracks of men at arms, a.k.a a fuckload of men at arms uh, but now villagers or rather uh, battering ram on the front line just going to get slowly but steadily picked off here by the longbows as they continue to push forward the muslim looking to age up behind this as well he's got plenty of resources in the bank so definitely going to be looking to age up and now men at arms moving over towards this position on the eastern flank unfortunately villagers do find themselves a little bit of a hole through that gate and manage to visit Oh, he's, he's, he's walling that, right? Yeah, he's walling that. Uh, so manages to wall out this position. Just make sure he's safe. And now Vortex reaches the Castle Age. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to witness, in all of its glory, nine men at arms coming out of these barracks. You can see he's got so many queued up. He's absolutely ready to go. Looks like plus two ranged defense is already coming through. Veteran archers also going to be coming through. He is not waiting for that preservation of knowledge. He doesn't need that discounted cost. He just wants to... Oh my lord, I just realized the House of Wisdom is on such low health at this point in time. Sitting on 5.5k health. Keep in mind, he's playing the Abbasid Dynasty, which means that if he loses both of these landmarks, it's good game. He's out. Sounds like over to the east of the map, we've got a wolf getting involved in a little bit of action. Villagers deciding they might invest their time a little bit more, a little bit more thoughtfully on that wood line. But now men at arms, mass beginning to build up here for the Muslim. The Muslim also aging up behind this. He's going to be going for the Palace of Kings or the King's Palace, I guess as it is alternatively called. And now men at arms coming out, just going to be getting scratched by those longbowmen. We can see that the men at arms yet to get that plus two upgrade in, but it's going to be coming in very shortly. Look at the damage that comes out from these longbows. 
sitting underneath with these network of castles uh, uh aura you can see them all glowing in gold and he is falling back he appreciates just the uh, the total strength coming out from these men at arms he needs to get veteran status on these longbowmen he needs to get his plus two pierce armor or pierce uh, attack rather and we'll check in with the Muslim and see how he's doing. It looks like it's going to be elite men at arms, or rather, I take that back, veteran men at arms, or just standard men at arms uh, that'll be coming out for him. It also appears that Arrow Slits is going to be coming down at the front here, but not for too long, my suspicion is, because these outposts probably going to be going down very, very shortly. And now Longbowman continuing to kite back towards the base. 1.12 movement speed. You can see it's up against the 1.12 movement speed of his enemy, and just struggling so much against these men at arms. You can see the damage that comes out from them one single damage from the longbowman and we still don't see those, that veteran archer or veteran longbowman upgrade coming through now it's finally coming through on a barracks nonetheless not going for the council hall where it's researched qu twice as quickly uh so deciding to go for the a little bit of a a an age a little bit of a, a later uh upgrade time but now we see a sprinkled emplacement at the top of the hill. Going to be coming down here. Going to be able to do a lot of work here. Uh, Battering Ram going to be going down, unfortunately, for the Muslim. And what an action-packed game we've had already on this King of the Hill. Neither player really fighting for control of the hill. Just playing it as... A, you, you would almost assume that there is no hill involved in this map at this point in time. Now we do see the Men at Arms looking to come out for the Muslim. He's got those upgrades on them. And now Men at Arms from his opponent looking to try and connect. The Muslim getting pushed into his base. He manages to fall back. Men at Arms still really yet to connect in this situation. So he looks like he's going to be able to get these veteran uh, longbows coming through also going to be going for balanced projectiles here balanced projectiles going to be giving him an extra huge amount of damage he's on seven at the moment uh the veteran longbowman will take him up to eight damage uh which will give him a total of nine and then he will be getting the balanced projectiles which should take him up to ten uh so now you can see it's coming through the eight damage and then of course he'll be up at ten and he'll be doing a lot more damage to these men at arms these guys that max out they cap out at six armor in age three and so that gives him a total of four damage so four times the amount of damage that he was doing in the feudal age against these men at arms Arms. But now we see veteran archers also coming out for his opponent, Vortex, and a mangonel going to be made behind it. I'm not sure whether the Muslim sees it, but indeed he does spot at the top of the hill because he's got that advantage, that extra line of sight. He's going to need to respond to this in some way, whether it is uh, a potential springled that he looks to try and get out or whether it is going to be armor clad aka armor chad coming out we'll take a look at how many barracks he's got he's actually got four barracks out so definitely intent on making more men at arms it seems and now in the middle of the map the mangonel begins to make moves as it fires down upon the archers but longbowman doing a great job in splitting you can see them focusing down the men at arms of his opponent still yet to move those units forward now finally going to be moving that men at, those men at arms into the back line looking to try and take out that mangonel indeed they do as the mangonel gets a shot off over on three archers and you got to tell you got to say from the muslim's perspective that is a pretty decent trade losing only a man at arm or a man uh, a, an archer or a longbowman or two uh, to that mangonel so very well played to him and now you can see the battering ram also slowly losing its health here the men at arms pushing forward the um, the uh, units of his enemy and they have got that armor clad coming through now so they are going to be looking to take absolute names and men at arms turning their attention towards the battering ram not the battering ram and indeed the battering ram goes down and once again the muslim is the king of the hill still yet to take control of that sacred site but do not be uh, alarmed ladies and gentlemen i suspect we're going to be seeing a monastery coming out very shortly from him right Right, the Muslim. He's going to be... Oh, my Lord. Look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We indeed see the monastery coming out, and it's at the top of the hill. So he is indeed intent on taking control of this sacred site and looking to batter down the hatches upon his opponent. And now a huge force beginning to move out. i got to say, I love the way that the Muslim plays the English. Just non-stop aggression, non-stop aggro. And this keep looks like it's going to be going up. The men at arms trying to deny it, but villagers are going to be forced to jump inside. He's got a lot of villagers here. Not all of them are going to be able to find room as the men at arm continue to struggle. Maganel coming out on the back line. Archers moving forward. Men at arm mass beginning to come down for his opponent. Vortex looking pretty good. We'll enter into a cinematic mode as we begin to witness the longbowman teeing off acro across the, the map, trying to take out that uh, that keep. And hold on a minute. Is that keep missing? Normal? Aren't there four of these things normally? four of the, the arrow slits on the top i guess not maybe it maybe it depends on which what which sieve you're playing uh, normally i'd be used to seeing all four four of these but uh, i guess it's not the case and now in the center of the map we hear the muslim is taking control of the hill
<laughs> do you guys see the way that the monk put the relic into the monastery? I wish we could I wish we could rewind the replay just by 10 seconds just to see how he did that because it kind of looked like he fell down. And you can <laughs> you can understand why. Like he's working with a little bit of a heel here, a little bit of a decline uh, that he's going up against. So look, I'm not surprised, mate. It's a tough gig. It's a tough gig you got. You capture that sacred site, you go get yourself a cold beverage, mate. You, you've done a great job. Keep up the good work. But speaking of good work, the Muslim now capturing that sacred site in the center. Get your stop watches out ladies and gentlemen 24 minutes 55 seconds was when that was initiated i don't know what sound that was but it sounded like fireworks oh i think it might have been the camps coming down here uh so yeah i think the muslim had waited to set up camp and apparently decided to use uh a, a quarter of c4 to, to start up the camp but now men at arms gonna be coming in on the western flank here a lot of farms getting through here whoa my lord that's a lot of farms in this nice little protected socket but now the muslim Deter determined to burn all farms to the ground as he continues to make waves upo upon the enemy's base. Uh, a quick stock take between these two players. The Muslim sitting on 90 villagers at the moment. His opponent sitting on 100. So Vortex not very far ahead of where you would expect him to be. But obviously that goes to show just how powerful that push was that came out from the Muslim in the early game. Now at the same time, we can see that there are forces beginning to move down upon the base of Vortex. Vortex really starting to struggle. He's sitting on 47 military compared to the 79 of the Muslim. And the Muslim is looking to continue sieging down all of these farms. A little bit of an overchop coming through in this scenario. A few archers making their way through. It looks like he's going to be trying to funnel in these men at arms one by one. But at the same time, he continues to struggle. Where are those military units right now for his opponent? There they are, Mangonels and men at arms. I think he's trying to hide them, try and take his opponent by storm. But uh, continuing to struggle. I think we see a few crossbows out. Indeed, we do. They're going to be able to handle this situation pretty easily. Keep in mind, they do have that plus eight armor. Uh, that is a lot of armor. They're going to be tanking up every single piece of damage from those archers. You can see the archers have got nine, or sorry, yeah, nine nine damage, and the men at arms have got eight ranged armor. So it is, uh, it is quite literally one damage that is being done against those men at arms but now it sounds like we've got a wolf being taken a wolf being killed over on this eastern side of the map and the Muslim is going to be pushing out with an outpost, looking to try and take a little bit more line of sight. You can see he's got control of the center of the map, but he wants to make sure he's not getting flanked by any sort of silly shenanigans, but now doing such a great job of just forcing Vortex into a difficult spot. And this is the consequence of putting farms in a location like this on the front, is that Vortex very easily... I mean, I say very easily, but it, yeah, you know what? Very easily. He could have put farms underneath his, his keep that he had already established. Now, these these farms probably came down a, a fair bit earlier than that keep, but this is the consequence of putting farms in a location that is rather extended. On the front side, we still see that longbow mass beginning to build 48 longbows coming out for Demuslim at this point in time. He is very happily king of this hill, and he continues to enforce it or reinforce this position. A lot of men at arms beginning to build up here. What do you even do against this amount of men at arms? Starting to get scary. Sprinkled emplacements coming out as well for these outposts. Look at the outposts as well. He's got the the upgrade that gives him a little bit more health. I say a little bit, a little bit more, but it is uh, it, it's double. It is double. So you get a really good investment, a really good ROI on those outposts because you're going to be getting the sprinkled emplacement in them as well. So you might as well give them an extra bit of health, a little bit more longevity. And now the Muslim is looking to try and just continue posturing on top of this position. Remember that he does have that sacred site ticking. So it really just comes down to this. And now the Muslim going to be reaching population cap. He's got a huge villager mass behind this as well. His economy is looking incredible. He's sitting on 103 villages at the moment. We'll check his monastery. He's got two relics so far. The monk just chilling out for the moment. There are three relics on the map, including this one that is safely behind the walls of his enemy. I say safely behind the walls, but you, you would have thought these farms were safely behind the walls. They were not. They were not. All of that farming economy is absolutely gone out the window at this point in time. And Vortex now gonna just going to be stacking up a little bit of wood. 3,000 wood. I don't know exactly what he's saving up for, but it seems like he's decided that it might be time to go as uh, there's a few battering rams out here, just a few. Villagers also getting pulled towards the center. I think he's just going to be going for a bit of stone, try and get a keep or two down. Maybe add in a, a town center in classic to Muslim style. Uh, you love to see him do it, but now it looks like Age 4 going to be coming through. He's going to be going for the Berkshire Palace, my absolute favorite landmark of the English. 23 villagers dropping it down. He's really looking to take control of this sacred site in the center. Battering rams beginning to move out, and we enter into 
into the cinematic mode, ladies and gentlemen, because it is time for us to party in the center. The dance floor, the final dance has been called, and now look at the bows beginning to fire off. The network of Citadel's upgrade just doing so much work here. Men at Arms looking to try and take control of the center. Battering Rams making their way through. We've got ourselves a little bit of a siege push as well as the Mangonels fire upon the units on the back line, but now the Men at Arms going to be making their way down the hill. Crossbows trying to get in on the action as well. Springled coming up for a little bit of a kiss. You know they love to do it. The Springled kiss not going to be getting out. Oh, look at this one going up for a kiss as well. He's trying his best, but now the Springled emplacement on the outpost going to be able to take it out. Men at Arms continuing around the corners. You can see they're just massing up in hu a huge amount. And now Springled's moving up for another kiss. They look like they lose position at the same time. Battering Rams moving in. There's a handful of Battering Rams that are still in here. You can actually see, actually, there's more than a handful. He's got six Battering Rams. The outpost or, or the, uh, the keep does go down in beautiful style. And now all of these Rams going to continue looking for their next targets. Barkshire Palace probably next on the menu. We'll see how he looks to play it as the push continues coming in towards the center. This is the Abbasid Death Push coming out in absolute force. And the Mangonel shot going to fall short a little bit on those longbowmen. And, and, and to a continued push uh, continues out from our Abbasid player. Vortex looking incredibly strong as he pushes towards the middle of the map. But you can see the longbow mass really starting to build here. Men at Arms continuing to flood in as well. The Sacred Sites get stood on. He's going to have to fall back from this position, realizing he's probably overstepped the mark a little bit here. Crossbow mass beginning to build up for Vortex. At the same time, he's taking out one-shotting all these men at arms, really struggling against them. And the Mangonels begin to push up. But the Barkshire Palace is going to be dealing with it. Look at the damage coming out from the Barkshire Palace. It's getting repaired up by the villagers here. Focus down completely that Barkshire Palace, just doing so much work against those Mangonels. It's not even able to reload. And now the Sacred Site actually gets held by... The Muslim, he's done an amazing job, an incredible job, and still we see this Barkshire Palace standing steadfast in the center of the map. The sacred site is held, and the Muslim is going to be very happy with this situation because he's managed to make it into Imperial. We hear a wolf or a boar getting in on the action as well. Somewhere out towards the west of the map, indeed, it was a wolf that did look to do it. Now, the Muslim moving up with men at arms. And I got to say, there's just something special about being zoomed out at this level. Take a look at how small these units are on my screen. That is exactly how it should be. There is nothing more beautiful than the scale we are witnessing in this battle as a keep begins to move forward here. At the same time, the bombard coming out from the Barkshire Palace. And damn, doesn't this game look beautiful? from this from this height the only thing i'd love to see is if we could remove the fog that would be wonderful i'm sitting here with a 3090 ti bro i think my machine can handle it even though i know i'm running 4k i know that i'm running 60 fps right now in fact it's a little bit over 60 fps we'll call it we'll, you know I'll, I'll say i think we can handle the fog take that bad boy off you know what? I'm sure as soon as the fog comes off, I'll be sitting at like 12 FPS. Don't do it. Don't do it, Relic. Don't do it. At least give us an option for it, maybe. <laughs> and then we can test it out. But, I mean, look at the top here. There's just so many keeps that are up on top of this hill. And keep in mind, that sacred site counter is still ticking at this point in time. And you did indeed hear it right there, ladies and gentlemen. It is three minutes until sacred victory begins. So get your stopwatches out. It is going to be happening. 35 minutes is the mark that you're going to be calling. Trebuchet beginning to unfold upon the keep that is down below it. The Muslim in full control of this game. You can see he's sitting up on 180 population at the moment compared over to his opponent who's on 174. But keep in mind, he's got a whole bunch of keeps on top of this castle. Keeps on top of the castle, keeps on top of the hill. Same, 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 same thing. But uh, yeah, the Muslim now very, very happy behind this. He's got his stone walls up. There is no potential raids going to be coming through except on this, uh, this eastern flank, which is wide open. But that's not his concern right now. His main concern is holding the center. And he's done such a great job in doing it. I've got to be honest with you. There was so much pressure coming out from the Muslim as the English. It was absolutely beautiful to see. And now we enter this late game situation where the Muslim has somehow managed to scrape through to the late game. He's now looking to get elite upgrades on his longbowman. And it really begs the question, what is there that his opponent can actually do? Oh, you know what? It looks like his opponent has decided. Vortex says, there's two minutes to go before that sacred victory comes in. I guess I'll just commit another 15 bloody rams. It's not going to be 15. It's only going to be five, but there are some mangonels coming out behind it. He's not quite maximum population at the moment, but you can see he is trying his best to hold on to this position with the keep. He's going to be moving forward. Bombard going to be looking to unload, but at the same time, Bombard going to be focusing down on these units at the, at the below. You can see the mangonel moving forward, but as a result, he goes in for a bit of a kiss and the, it goes goes down the Bombard. The poor Bombard's going to be losing its life. Springled's now looking to try and tee off. And you can see the Mangonel doing huge damage on all of those Longbowmen. The Longbowmen just doing so damn beautifully. We're going to be entering into the cinematic mode to witness in all of its glory this battle, which could potentially be the final battle of the game. The Muslim is looking to hold on. He's got such a big mass of units here. A single Mangonel coming out. Just going to be firing down on the Men at Arms. Men at Arms barely taking any damage whatsoever. And now look at the Longbowmen just doing so much work. They're actually focusing down. Mangonel! Mangonel! Oh, it looks tab. tab 
absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible. But he still holds on to this sacred site. He's still yet to move forward to the next point, and he's got feet on the sacred site. You got one minute to go. You better make a push now, Vortex, because it is now or never. And he taps out. Vortex says, "Good game." The Muslim holds the sacred site and wins the series, or at least wins the match. I don't know if he wins the series. He wins the match. Well played to the Muslim, fellas. Make sure you check out EGC TV this weekend. 15 GMT, Saturday, Sunday. Be there or be square. I'll catch you guys in the next one.